Take a breath, step outside. A uh, very good evening. I'd like to acknowledge our traditional caretakers and ancestors to these lands we reside on here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, we have 19 pueblos around us. And wherever you're beaming in from, we'd like to acknowledge your traditional caretakers and ancestors of your lands as well. And uh, we, uh, as Indigenous Ways, are absolutely committed and dedicated to bridging cultural exchange with people globally at this time. And we really appreciate you stopping in, either watching or listening our, to our recordings. Uh, so just a quick recap about Indigenous Ways virtual events. We started this eight months ago and have archived over 60 virtual events. And I want you to consider making a donation to our end of year campaign, which will keep us going in the new year, supporting the artists, musicians, presenters, elders, wisdom keepers, and ASL interpreters. You can go to our website, indigenousways.org. Uh, that's I-N-D-I-G-E-N-O-U-S-W-A-Y-S.org. And you will see on our banner, end of year campaign thank you very much this evening we are very blessed to have our brother mr lorenzo jim who hails from tis naspas on the navajo nation that's t e e c n for nancy o s p for paula o s tis naspas uh, it's a very special place on our reservation and he works in Albuquerque, and we were so blessed to be introduced to Lorenzo Jim through my best friend, Candy Jones. And we have been following Lorenzo's movements with his uh, occupation and the amazing work he's doing. We were so um, impressed by Lorenzo that we asked him to share some of uh, a little slice of a part of Lorenzo's life with us this evening. So everybody welcome Lorenzo Jim. Thank you very much, Lorenzo. Thank you, and uh, welcome everyone. And we'll um, share a, a good connection today, a good opportunity, a good, a good, um, a good moment to share. So there's a um, a cradle board. We say um, cradle board eyes and ears so i guess we'll be practicing that tonight it means uh when you're in a cradle board all you have moving is your eyes and ears and the rest of the time you're embraced and it's a learning i think it's a learning platform in that set so it's what we'll be practicing tonight so again thank you all um I'll share more of my introductions as I'm sharing, as I'm going along today or tonight. Um, as long as I can remember, um, as, as long as I can actually remember, um, I remember playing ceremony. I don't know if you've ever had the the, um, the childhood like mine, where everything around you was, was um, so captivating and a lot of important things going on. So we used to play ceremonies, sometimes the healer, sometimes the patient. And we would, um, you know, we're, we're very young children. And my mother would say, you used to, way before she, I don't remember this, but my mother said, um, we, you were about three, maybe three years old. And I was in a um, Fruitland, New Mexico, at my grandma and grandpa's house. And my grandpa used to use water as a diagnostician, so he used to look in water and do a, um, like a diagnostic assessment for ceremony. 
and he and I just kidnapped Jinnah. And he used to um, use the, the, um, uh, he, my, my mom said, we, we watched you one morning and you got your grandpa's pillow and he was very stingy with his pillow. And we watched you drag, drag it to the stove. And then there was this huge yellow tabby cat, little chubby cat. And we, we watched you put the cat on top of the pillow. And then you asked your grandma, ma, ma, to, give me some water. And we were watching you and your grandpa, who said, he, she said, that water, that cup of water, you stood over the cat and like you're doing a diagnostic ceremony and just looking over this cat. She said, it was really, she said, it was really neat. It was really, it was something to see, she said, watching this boy, this, I mean, this child, she said, your child practicing that. So I was telling my mom, I said, that was actually my first CAT scan that I did. I was about three years old. I can't see smiles or I can't see expressions, but um, <laughs> I want to share about rise and resilience from my own, my meaning, our own meaning. Because I think those words um, have a, have weight to it, but I think through our language, there's a lot more meaning, and I'll, I'll make some connections as we as we share. Um, it's a song, um, maybe around 4.30 in the morning, we would sing. My father and I would sing this together. It's a day away, yellow, yeah, and then the it's a day away, yeah. And it goes ke ana del jesho ha doni de ne ye lago ye ene ne la di ishe se slat ana shne ko be khono shne ye lago ke ana ha del jesho do ha de neta. It means, in a, and I guess if I try try my best to translate it into English, it means through. Time, meaning through changes, through through time, through seasons, through through cycles, our values don't change. It they actually grow stronger, or they become more. You say like. Maybe um, more meaningful, even through time, even through changes. So I was thinking about that, and like this corn here. So we have stories and songs about corn as a life source. So just as the time when it was in creation time, when it was gifted to us, it looked like this. It looked just the same. So like the values, our cultural, our family, our life way values. And that's what I'm gonna share more in, in I guess you could say in correlation. Rise and resilience. So key ingredients of storytelling 
as our database, our realities, our values, our, our, our life. There's always crisis, conflict, challenge, or crisis, transition, and growth. And how we, how we learn and how we become stronger. So I want to talk about, share with you this planning season in the spring season when we actually, they call it the earthly planting season. So planting a corn um, into the earth, earth planting, earthly planting season. So what comes out or what springs up in this earthly season planning is nourishment and actually care and sustenance. There's one, uh, one of our traditional stories where the enemy, I say the enemy, maybe the, um, the, a clan, one of our clans, and they lost everything, they said. They were, they were at a time, a moment in their life where there was a, they, there was like a great fire. I guess you could call it that. And it was a boy who took corn and placed it into his south like this, or embraced, or put it into, and put it away. And that the people continued even after you could say they lost everything. So the corn, it had everything like a database of knowledge, skills, and abilities. So the story goes when everything is in chaos. So make sure you grab corn because you're going to then be okay. You'll sustain yourself. So there's something that is taking place even right now with this season. There's a spiritual season in the winter time. There's actually, they call a winter seasonal planning. So what is planet for us is resilience, strength, and peace. So the story of the season, the bitter coal, the, the bitter winds, the coldness, the snow, awaiting a change. And there, the story of the black obsidian boy, Bashinishki, he's the planter for this season. So he plants the seeds of challenges and hardships and opportunities for us. And I'm actually kind of afraid whenever I talk about the story of the Black Obsidian Boy, because I know what challenges I've experienced and actually how dif what difficulties and challenges mean. So when we look into the sky, the clouds and the dark black clouds, my father would say, hey, there's, Black obsidian boy. And he's planning for us for the next season. Or he's cultivating actually within us, even though it might be challenges, 
but it's also strength that he's bringing out. Even though it might be hardships, but it's compassion that is going to be sort of grown, I guess you could say, or sprouted from us from within. It might be loss within ourselves, but it's going to be growth, something life is going to grow out of it. So the black obsidian boy, Bashani Ishki, is this seasonal planning here. Or you could say the winter planting season. And if you notice, as I'm sharing in my culture, um, children are actually um, heroes. So whenever I talk or whenever we share about any of our hero stories, they're always about children, the black obsidian boy, the early dawn boy, crystal girl, the turkey boy, the twin warriors, the twin boys. So when you say use the word resilience, it's actually children. The story of children. So I have these pictures here. As as tiny and small as they are, how highly intelligent children they can learn are are they can learn a new language. They can learn to speak a new language by observation, by learning as sort of frail and wobbly, I guess, really just really lacking the physical ability or physical, the physical um, makeup. They can learn to walk and run. And then the world around them, how willing they're, they want to learn and explore without fear. So we talk about children's stories. And I understand this word resilience. This song I shared with you about as through time and through challenges, our values stay the same or they grow stronger. It's a song about the early dawn boy, Mikhail Kaseishki, who carried that vision <clears throat> even though he was challenged, or even though there were these obstacles ahead of him. Every morning he rose and led other children. There's even the story of the a boy, he his brother he he couldn't see, but he could walk. And then his other younger brother, he could see, but he couldn't walk. So they, he carried his brother around and he was his eyes. And together they were complete. So the story of resilience. So as I'm thinking of the challenge now, you say COVID-19, we often wear this um, as a, it seems like um, 
see, um, when we were younger, you hear this one word, get, and there would be total silence. We would all just stop. And it was sort of like a sacred moment to just be quiet and be still and listen, get, get show. So it's the same when I put on my, this bow guard, it sort of makes that, I guess you could say connection that I'm prepared for something that come a challenge difficulties, um, struggles. So I was talking to my father and he was in, I was listening to him and we're talking about our mask, it's kind of like our new boat guard. When we put it on, we're very careful. It's like a a resilience value or a protection value. And as we are all experiencing this together, Ishi in needs and we say we sort of respect that again or we're we're reconnecting back to some of these um Values again. Means it's growing stronger. I was um, I, I think um, the opportunity that we often hear about this new story that we're all experiencing, our, our hero's journey that sort of we're all experiencing together is a new story for us again. So we, I often, my uncle said, um, I need, I need, I need, hotolish. means let there be a new medicine or through changes or through time there would be the need for a new medicine. So as we're experiencing, maybe in another hundred years, our stories will be told again about our connections tonight, like this, how we work together or how we, the, those, um, those, so I was asking my father that question one time when I was a lot younger. He said, how long ago, when he shares his stories, traditional stories, how long ago was that, dad? How long ago was Akita Jinnah? And then he would say, I don't know, I think 1952, he says, that's as long as I can remember, he says. And then my grandpa, his long time ago was up to 19, maybe 1909. So I said, my long time ago was from 1978 everything that I've heard and experienced or I've learned knowledge. It's 
So he used to tell me um, when we when we um, do these changes, he says uh, they used to have corn or use cornmeal every morning to sort of it's like a shared meal with nature, with all of our guardians and protectors. So I, I sprinkle it like this forward. So like, um, like this bundle here, like it would have cornmeal, like grinded corn in there. So we, we would take it out and then sprinkle it and say, let there be some, let there be positivity, let there be something good let there be safety, let there be um, good, good blessings ahead of me. So today we, it's kind of what we're, what we are used to doing. Then my father says, I remember a time, he said, where they would get corn and then he said they would sprinkle it towards them too. Or he says, I remember even before that, I heard they would put that cornmeal to the ground like this, and then they would sprinkle it upwards. It's kind of like they want something for themselves, something good. Or their corn, they wanted it to grow. And then he said, my grandfather used to and had told him they used to get cornmeal out and they'd sprinkle it like this, and like side to side for protection. And he said, maybe during his time, when there was that, the great war. And he asked this question again, he says, I wonder what it, I wonder how they'll be using cornmeal in the next, maybe another generation, he says. He says, just pay attention and watch the changes. So as I'm sharing, adapting our cultural values towards modern changes and challenges. It would be my, my focus sharing on rise and resilience. Um, and as we all experience the challenges, our home values, our relationships are growing stronger, our appreciation again. The, um, the, the hardships are being planted Obsidian boy is, we say, doing his thing. My daughter, she, uh, she overcame COVID. And my grandmother, last night she was released, or no, tonight she was released, excuse me. And she, her oxygen levels went down. So she has COVID uh, like precautions. They took her in yesterday and she's pulling through. And uh, this morning I took cornmeal out. And my elders used to say, like, we, we always say holy people are the yin the na. And this is a traditional way, and maybe a traditional thought was 
the holy people also met the sick, those challenges, the, um, the disease maybe, the virus, the kostene, shodene. And you said you have to respect them too. Or you have to treat them like they're sacred. So I got my cornmeal this morning and I said, here, all of my protectors and all of my, my guardians and my ancestors and my, the holy people, the sacred people and even the sickness people here, I'm feeding you too. Just pity us, just take care of us, make us stronger, help us. There's a little, I don't know, you'd say uh, challenging. And I, I even had to talk to a friend of mine today about that thought. Hey, uh, you should saw nantin words of reflection of knowledge. Sad edeti words of understanding. Sad ashtawin zindagi or words that bring focus. And that's what I shared with you all tonight. And I, as we are working through these challenges, I wanted to share a little bit here about, or just show you all some of our my my work, or some of the connections that we are creating our tribal COVID relief says on there, the Navajo Nation providing them, providing our relatives firewood recently, essential food bags, PPE to different communities. And here how cultural care, we call it, providing where it nourishes, reinforces, and sustains the, our food as medicine, growing relationships with, with nature and how that cultivates, reinforces values again, or makes the meaning and purpose sort of clear. We engage our patients or our relatives into nature, call it nature fitness. And our equine assistant learning program are called horse medicine, building relationships with self, nature and the others. As well as making lasting connection, supportive, relational, and engaging. So, I'm gonna stop here. And I hope to maybe connect with you, maybe even take, take some time now to, to share some of our thoughts. Lorenzo, thank you very much. And uh, really, really appreciate your dedication 
to uh, the people and the work you do with First Nations Community Health Source. Um, we hear a lot of good things about uh, what you all do and engage in. You just keep the momentum going, bringing the people, the indigenous people in Albuquerque together for various events and all the events have food. So I've been so blessed to be a part of that and uh, really good stuff. I uh, want to send uh, prayers for your grandmother, your masane and your daughter and the rest of your family that are dealing with this uh, uh, COVID-19, as we call it in Navajo, we call it the, the big sickness because it's a big one. It's uh, impacting the world right now. And we're all in this together. We're all in this together and really appreciate uh, the sacredness you put on the power of the people, the virus, and uh, the importance of us thinking about the masks we wear in a very sacred way. It's not a joke, it's not a game, and we're protecting others by protecting ourselves. So thank you. Really quickly, I just wanna mention next week, we're very excited. We have Pam Houston, best-selling author, Zooming in Wednesday at 6 o'clock on the 16th, and she will be uh, sharing some her stories in Rising and Resilience, and she'll probably read some of her literature as well. Uh, she is a best-selling author. She also teaches at the Institute of American Indian Arts Master's Program, and she's been uh, very instrumental in uh, graduating writers such as Tommy Orange and um, some really good writers that are coming out of IAIA. You can uh, check our indigenousways.org for more information as well as uh, our Wisdom Circle archived events. And uh, we would love for you to share this recorded video with everyone, which will be available in the next 48 hours on our website. There you will find, as I said before, over 60 indigenous presenters and artists. And let's not forget our allies as well. Right above me, indigenousways.org, very user-friendly website. And all our social media sites right below me, uh, so forth and so forth. And then we also would like to thank our sponsors, Native American Advised Fund, Santa Fe Community Foundation, National Endowment of the Arts, West Staff, West Staff Cares, New Mexico Arts and Humanities, New Mexico Humanities Council, and National Endowments of Humanities. And these are all free events we're able to offer through Indigenous Ways, and our American Sign Language interpreters are also here with us and very committed to this program so thank you and they are we're, we're all this is a free program for everybody we want to thank our board members some of you i'm sure are here with us tonight thank you and we also want to thank our individual donors as well and you can donate to right next to me uh there's different ways to donate we've got our end of year campaign we want this to keep going. We're not out of the woods yet. We're still quarantined and we want the sacred word, sacred word to continue to be shared with the rest of the world because indigenous people are sacred beings just like everybody else. So at this time, I'd like to invite everybody to join us this evening. If you'd like to uh, turn your cameras on, if you wish and unmute your microphones, if you wish and if you have any question, Questions for our brother, Lorenzo, please join us. Comments, social media, those of you on Facebook, Instagram, we can read your comments to Lorenzo. Yate, Christine and uh, oh, Hilda and Christine, uh, how y'all doing this evening? It's been a long time. Thank you for being with us. Any questions for Lorenzo? or comments. Oh, we need to unmute. 
or maybe Elena can do it. So in your um, tradition, you spoke about corn. Was tobacco also important for blessing and smudging? Oh, we need to unmute Lorenzo. Yeah, I, I had something really clever to share. I already shared it, so it's not going to sound as good as the second time. I'm kidding. But um, no, tobacco is food. Um, just the like food for your your spirit. And then there's food like for your body. So like beans, squash, corn, and then tobacco. Not to. So it, it there's a um, the traditional concept of food and that nourishment. Uh, so even um, like uh, if you open up our bundles, they have corn attached, like tied to them. Every so we can, you know have that nourishment and sort of you know on on the, on our on our journey. I mean. So tobacco, yeah, not not bull Durham tobacco. <laughs> Beach nut. <laughs> no. Thank you for that. Uh, good question. Thank you very much, Hilda and Christine. And uh, now we can uh, go across the board to uh, Marie. Would you like to share something? Thank you. Yeah, Tay. Um, I, no, I'm just listening. Um, I, I um, have been in discussions um, before with Lorenzo, so I just am here to support him and um, and also to hear what he has to say. And I, I just love the, um, you know, the connection between the, you know, original knowledge and um, and moving forward and this this moment in time the pandemic and kind of see seeing what happens and and you talk about the new medicine do you want to talk more about that maybe yeah they um like uh native native american church when every when all of our tribes were incarcerated, you could say, it was a pandemic at one point. So everything shifted or changed overnight. We created like famine and, you know, separation. But that medicine, a new medicine came to, to, to us. So in Native American church, the use of that medicine, that so that carried us through, um, and it's still it's made us stronger as well. Or it kept us connected, or it created that healing. So a lot of our traditional ceremonies, um, there's, you know, medicine people that would gather and would bring us our and something what like a new medicine would be created. A new ceremony, maybe. I know I ask those kinds of questions back home when they're like, let's, um, they say, Lorenzo, don't ask those questions. Like, we should have a ceremony for, you know, maybe uh, a, a new enemy like methamphetamine. And maybe a uh, give it a name and let's have a ceremony for that but i know they have ceremonies um other kinds of enemy like for like um soldiers warriors so something again just i think my my perspective is this sort of um i hope it's a balanced perspective and as i'm sharing 
and I think that's sort of the the um, uh, the vision, I guess you could say, of healing is that there's new medicine. Thank you, Marie. It's good to see you. Thank you, Hat Lorenzo, and thank you, Marie. And I just wanted to uh, read something off Facebook. Our sister, Janie Immerman from New York City, is asking, is there a plan for getting vaccines to the reservations in a timely manner? She says, thank you, Lorenzo. Um, I've been, we've been asked to be on like one of the advisory or a ethics committee for um, Indian Health Service. So, and I think that was the question that is this the limited amount right now? And it, this is just an initial, I think everything is happening initially. So, um, and I've also, um, as a member of the, the Nehatkathli Association, I just saw um, messages about an upcoming meeting to include medicine people as part of, uh, as, you know, to be, to be vaccinated first or part of the um, essential workers and including them. So I think they're going to propose that to the tribe. So I think just as anywhere else, it's going to be a challenging, you know, initially it's going to be a little challenging, but um, in time, you know, I think we're going to be able to to provide, or it will be provided, you know, to the reservation or to rural communities, and so I'm, I'm, and I, I know it's a challenging question to ask right now, but I think the discussions are happening at you know different, different levels. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Janie, for the question, and thank you, Lorenzo, and let's go to Christina Bueno. Would you like to say some words from New York City? This is Christina. <clears throat> I did come in a little bit late at 819. And uh, the other interpreter, I saw her mention the cornmeal and the sprinkling of the cornmeal. And that really got my attention. But then that was around the time the interpreter changed. And then it got a little distracting for me because I couldn't pin the interpreter in time. And I was trying to watch the message as the other interpreter came up and tried to see what was being said. But I did catch and got back into it after it, it resized. And I heard the portion mm -hmm. where you were talking about the cornmeal. And for me, I'm going to have to go back and watch the recording again because I did miss a big portion of it. But that part that you mentioned about the sprinkling of the cornmeal, I caught that and that was very interesting. Thank you. So the the practice, it's, it's a very important part of like um, my grandmother, um, She's, she's 99 years old and she, when we, in the morning, I'd hear the door close, maybe really early in the morning before, like you could kind of see light breaking through and, and when I, I would be curious and look at the window and she'd just walk, you know, to the east of the home of the Hogan, Hogan, and then she'd stand there and she'd be sprinkling cornmeal. And she says, like, they're hungry, too. They need food. You know, the earth, I'm you know, feeding the earth with our mother. She wants, you know, she's hungry, so I'm going to feed her. The sky, like that, the sun. So I was like, you as well, be, you be well, too, like, to talking to the earth, to her ancestors. And then in the evening, when we were, like, we were, plane maybe and the, starting the sun's going down and then she walked to the west and she didn't make an announcement or anything but she did it in that 
sort of focused manner. And then she'd stand way over there and then she'd be sprinkling yellow cornmeal. So the morning would be like white cornmeal and then the evening the yellow cornmeal. And it was just a way I, you could say a shared moment, you know, that you, you, you shared with your, the earth, maybe the, your ancestors as well. Injd nicht, they say. Jonah Jonah, thank you very much. And thank you, Christina Bueno, for your question. I'd like to go over to our brother Richard from San Francisco. Unmute, Richard. I'm, I'm doing it. Uh, okay. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I, I'm since you mentioned Bull Durham, I'm going to mention uh, uh, what's that? Uh, the one with the uh, sacred spirits, the one with the sacred pipe on. That I have, I have complained and complained, and particularly when I see people smoking, I said, you know, native people have asked uh, uh, them to take that pipe, sacred pipe, off, and of course they haven't. So I try to get people to uh, to boycott that one. Um, I'm always grateful that native people share what they know, because you didn't have to, as you know. But you have kind hearts, something that the empire seems to be lacking. And I'm glad that you uh, are a man who can come out and speak and speak the truth that you know that's very important. You know, we keep losing our elders. Uh, yesterday was the um, anniversary of uh, John Trudell's death and John Lennon as well. And now I see uh, the American Indian Movement co-founder Eddie Benton Banal has passed. And what I know is very little of him. He was somebody who uh, stayed in the background. But what I've learned about him is that he was a very kind, very, very uh, spiritual uh, aspect to aim. And we have many people out there like, like Eddie and uh, and we need to recognize them. And I think uh, the man who spoke today is, is one of those people, Mr. Mr. Lorenzo Jim. And we have to appreciate people who come out and speak to us because we have so few people who can tell us the truth. We have a lot of people who can tell us lies. Uh, a lie, that, the truth doesn't even recognize itself sometimes. It, it sometimes sees itself as the lie but uh, there are people who do know the truth. And thank you, Mr. Jim, for, for coming and, and enlightening us. Thank you. Thank you, Hat Richard. Thank you very much. And let's uh, go on to Mary Sue. Would you like to speak tonight, Mary? Sue? Oh my goodness. Hello, everyone from the East Coast in Connecticut. Um, thank you so much for your service, Tosh. And I know Elaine is sitting there somewhere hiding. Um, thank you, Lorenzo Jim. I um, I came in on, the, on my phone before and I was watching and hearing and then I had to run over to my computer because I couldn't see what I wanted to see. And I can't feel anything when you're on a phone, you can't, uh, can't visualize someone speaking. And when I got on here, I, I just texted absolutely amazing and beautiful those pictures. And I'm a horse fanatic and I saw that beautiful horse and all I could feel was the earth and life and the beauty uh, that's out, you know, in your way of life. And, um, you know, it's so different here on the East Coast. <laughs> it's cold and it's it's cold <laughs> and you don't have that beautiful, flat, gorgeous grounds. And a lot of people send me pictures out from Santa Fe so that I can see the mountains and the sky. And to me, that's earth, that's life. And that's how you just projected a way of living tonight. Um, I was very touched. I was touched by the way you talk about family and um, truth and honesty and um, 
today I was in a meeting and our topic was uh, courage, a willing to change. And uh, that was pretty, that was pretty interesting. And um, what I learned from you tonight, and I'm not even going to, you know, you know, offer you a question. I was, what I was interested in is your planting procedures that you, you were planting things along. That was the part that I caught up in where you were planting things. And I wanted to know what you were planting. I didn't get it. You know, I couldn't hear pretty much what you were doing when you were discussing it, Jim. Uh, you know, are those seedlings to grow for the future of our, our life? When I was trying to picture that, um, because to me, when I pull out a plant from my garden, I try to reseed that plant. Like if I, like when we cut down a tree, we try to put back a tree because that's earth and that's, you know, life in a sense. So I was going to ask you, what were you planting, you know, in those planters? <laughs> so that maybe I could have some <laughs> here. Because that's my vision of life is when you take one thing from the earth, you must give it back, maybe being twofold. They, that's they my have, question to you. Yeah, I think in the planting box, there was, um, I know one type of corn they put in there and then the different spices. Oh. And, and we would make these kits for our, our um, families that live in, in the urban city. And we would, they would learn how to sort of build that connection and, you know, how planning is like, it, it's, it's, it's a way of living, you know, attention, responsibility, as well as um, relationship that happens with even like our, our, our farms. Mm. Um, but I had mentioned also like, a natural planting season like the winter and how that would bring us I, I used the story of our one of our traditional stories and how the the planning of hardships that obsidian is our arrowhead very 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 sacred story and as I mentioned you know challenges and but how that cultivates through that experience or journey in our journey is how that you know cultivates strength I guess resilience mm -hmm. and how that brings out compassion again and reminds us or goes connects back to those values so I, I think that's kind of where that Hopefully I made and, that connection again for you, Mary. Yeah, you did. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. You did because here, um, I, you know, I volunteer with a group of, uh, you know, local farmers who have to uh, farm their own stuff. I mean, we, we work to um, preserve the, you know, they have to make their own, if they have to, their livelihood is the local farmers here um, in Connecticut. And, you know, so it just sort of made a connection to me when you were, yes, and the answer is yes. <laughs> you did, you helped me out in that respect. So I, I bless you, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, they, um, there's this thing we do, um, we, we throw ourselves in the first snow and you would take a snow bath. Our, our kids, we get them up while they're, kicking and screaming and then we throw them in the snow and and sort of plant them, plant ourselves in it. Rub sort of it like our East Coast Angels. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as the snow comes, we'll just like throw ourselves and make a snow angel. <laughs> yeah. And that you would say, make me strong. Take care of me, you know, that snow. Mm, nice. All right, thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much, Mary Sue, for your question. Uh, I'd like to pass the mic on to uh, Bruce, if you'd care to say anything this evening. Um, yate, Lorenzo, <laughs> it's so good to see you. 
I, I just want to tell you uh, how special it has been to be here and that the many times I've been with you, I always find that going into the narrative that you just delivered is going into sacred space. It's, it's just beautiful um, how you brought the messages together. And I, I was just so uh, touched by the way in which you brought the child in, not only in your story, but as an illustration of um, the ability to learn and explore without fear and how the values, the deep, deep values take us into those places, the places of unknown, the places of COVID um, with the sacred ability to explore. Um, thank you so much. It was very, very meaningful. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. And good to see you again. Good to see you. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you very much, Bruce. And uh, last word for the evening, our brother Maurice, would you like to come in and say some words this evening? I was going to help someone. I couldn't find the time to come earlier. And when I came, I just uh, ran, 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 ran and say, I'm here. So I want to say thank you for this wonderful time we have to share. And I'm very pleased to know you and to meet you through Zoom. If Zoom was, uh, if this pandemic was not there, I wish I would come down to see Lorenzo in Mexico. <laughs> and maybe next year after the pandemic, we can do it. Mm -hmm. We are breeding the bridge. Yes. That connect all people. Yes. We are one person. In the African Ubuntu, we say, I am because you are. Yes. So yes. you being there make me feel pride. Thank you. Thank you, Maurice. Yeah, thank you very much, Maurice. All right, everybody, we are here every Wednesday, 6 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And on the third Saturday at three o'clock Mountain Standard Time, we have a wonderful list of uh, beautiful talent that provides us with beautiful indigenous entertainment. We want to thank all of you who have tuned in live this evening uh, for Lorenzo Jim and his organization, organization uh, FNCH.org. We appreciate you all being with us here this evening through Zoom or other social media sites. Ajeje, gracias, merci, kiora, tolofalava. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's give it up for Lorenzo Jim. Woo! And we want to thank our ASL interpreters who uh, make all of this possible for our wonderful deaf and hard of hearing uh, audiences. We'll see you all next week and stay sacred. Wear your, wear your masks and think about it as protecting them to protect you and protect you to protect them. And let's all protect each other and let's get through this world family. Let's give it up for Lorenzo. Touch the earth, touch the earth. Yeah.